Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be listening from in the world. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It's your boy Kent Mellows and King Ami, and you rocking with Salem Avenue on a Tele Two City podcast. Word, 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 and we back, and we back, and we back. It's a nice jacket, man. Oh yeah, man. It's a nice jacket. Bring it out today, man. So today we got episode five. Episode five. Word. And you know, we talked last week about getting people on here and we and having something to bring to the show, man. So without further ado, man, I wanna I wanna um introduce my player partner, my homie since back in the day, you know, my brother from another, you know, uh the brother with the butter, key <laughs> butter, you know what I'm saying? No man other. Butter. You know, man butter. butter. <laughs> you know I mean? okay. Hey, man butter. Hey, that's what we'll call it. All right. You know, that's that's what we're going with now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, a minute, shot, wait a minute, man. wait a minute, wait a minute. He got a close up. Yeah, too, can right? we see that again? You know, we lit. We lit. Can we see it? Bam, bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. Don DeMarco. DeMarco. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, well, um, I'm Don DeMarco. 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 Don um, so, so we uh, you know, we got some questions we want to ask you. You know, we gonna want to get to the bottom of some things. You know, ask you about your experiences over the last year, year and a half. Yeah, man, like you've been, you've been, you know, <clears throat> we was on a different wavelength um, this time last year. Yeah, and then some things happened. You know, you you took me to the side. Like I was like, damn, he about to say, he about to figure out about that money I stole. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me some. He told me something else. But um, before we do that, before we do that, though, this weekend is the new New Heartbreak Music Festival. I just yes, want to re yes, reiterate. Yes, um, by the time that y'all see this, we would have already went and done our thing, right? And it was fire. Like I appreciate y'all for inviting all those people to the Salem Ave show. So that's the energy. Hey, ain't that the energy? That's the energy. Bruno Mars at the Super Bowl. That's the energy, man. You know what I'm saying? This is Mike Jack. This is Mike Jack at the Super Bowl. You know, this is, it is what it is. But but I am, I mean, man, I am really looking forward to it. You know, I'm excited. I'm a little skeptical, you know. I'm not. I'm not. I think I'm a little skeptical. Um, I think it'll be fine. I think the turnout will be nice. Yeah, I feel like that as well. I feel like that as well. Um, I'm interested to see what this food is looking like. Oh, um, yeah. I, uh, you know. You know, supposed to be ass shaking and chicken, and you know, I expect to see both on, at the same time. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> I saw a meme, yeah. bro, and it was like, <laughs> it was like, it was like, this is how I be at the club, and it was like a dude eating a chicken. He was like smashing, and then they showed like a, a girl at the strip club, and it went back to do it. He's just like, mm, mm, like, that's <laughs> just funny, bro. That like, shit is beautiful, man. It's like that, that's the truth, bro. It's like the, the food in the butt. That's what it is. So, but um, <laughs> now I, I do want to talk to you, kid, like. So what he pulled me to the side about was, you know, he's like, man, look, man, you know, I did it, man. You know, it was, she, you know, she, yeah, man, you know, baby on the way, man. I'm like, what you mean? Like, no, what'd he say? Baby key on, you like, you know, it's baby key now. It's coming. It's yeah, on the way, baby man. key on the way. Man. And I'm like, all right, I think he's playing. I think he's joking. So I'm like, you, you fucking lying. Like, why would, why wouldn't you, you know what I'm saying? It was a weird time and I felt like, um, <sighs> But I mean, just tell me your thoughts, man. When that like that information came to you, bro. Like, how did you feel? Like, we we in our twenties, man. So like, I guess when you in your twenties and you know, late, you know, kids, right? Late, yeah. but like, <laughs> late. yeah, <laughs> biggest had to make that be known. Late, man. yeah, late twenties. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, like when kids, when kids come about, and um, I'm not saying that you're you're not ready or whatever, but like it's not in the plans at the time exactly. Um, it can kind of catch you off guard, right? Like, is that something that for you was just like, okay, like what did that change something? I had to reroute some shit for you, man. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a different rerouting, like in your brain, like because you don't plan for that moment. Nobody really like, especially when it happens the way it did. You don't plan for it. I was just, you know, right. chilling, go about my day. You know, I just see two pregnancy tests just laid out in front of me. I'm like, what's mm. this? Like, nah, this got to be a joke. Ain't no way. Like, we were just, you know, mm -hmm. we just turned up for your birthday. We was having a good time. You know, we was drinking was. for a birthday and everything. Sure, it was, it was good. Sure. And, you know, she was throwing up. And, like, <laughs> so, like, nah, it wasn't on the birthday, nigga. You know, it happened before the birthday. But, you know, we were drinking our birthday and she threw up. And, you know, 
Everybody thought we was, we was smashing the bathroom. I was up there rubbing her back, trying to help her throw up. Everybody, oh, y'all getting it in? I'm like, nah, it ain't that. I came out with some gloves. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just cleaning up. <laughs> yeah, I was cleaning up throw up. You know, I came out with some gloves. So they thought, you know. He had some gloves on. <laughs> like, yeah, I was cleaning up and, you know, and like just processing everything. It took me a while, man. I was quiet for a minute. You know, I usually got something to say, but I was just sitting there like. Flabbergasted, right? Like, all right, like, like, damn, like. As a man, it's like almost like, um. It's, I don't know. As a man, it's it's crazy because you're not in control, first of all. At this point, you've already done your part. You know what I'm saying? So now Jesus. all you can do <laughs> done my part? Damn, that's that's what that's a way to take it, okay? No, like as a no, done my part. Yeah, all right, that's what yeah, we're going with. When it comes with. to conceiving a child, your part's done, nigga. Like you've already good. You know oh what I'm saying? <laughs> good. So, That's the word now. Good. good. We'll go with good. So now you just gotta stand by and you gotta rub your back. You gotta rub that back for nine months now, right? And what goes through your mind? Like, what is it like, man? Like, I don't. You know, I'm trying to. I'm asking you obviously because I have, I want to know about the experience. I've never right. never had obviously. I mean, it's one of those things. I think it's gonna be different for everybody. Like, you know, everybody gonna handle the situation with a child differently. For me, not like it coming unexpected. You know, my biggest thing is like, okay. Now I got a baby. At that time, I didn't really know, but you know, I got a baby girl here now. But it's like, right. whatever child that comes out, you know, they got to come into this world like that we currently living in. So whatever problems, whatever that's going on, like that's my thoughts. They're gonna have to deal with that one day, whether we want to want them to or not. So I'm like, let me make sure you good mentally, so this energy can you know get transferred over to the baby. Like that's that's all I'm, so, I'm here for. So I suppose I do have a question, and it's it's. It's it's really for you to speak on you and Ray Ray. Like, what does what does that dynamic look like when you all find out that you're having a child and it's early? Like, like let's say maybe three, four, maybe five weeks. You know, after you all found out, how does you all's life change when the baby isn't here yet? She ain't even necessarily showing yet, but it's confirmed. Like this motherfucker's coming. Yeah. Where is there like the, the stress? I'm obviously some type of stress can be a, a thing. Yeah. Like, what does that do for y'all's dynamic as a couple? Um, I think in our situation, like I said, everybody's situation is always different. But right. for us, I, I feel like you know it made it stronger. Like it wasn't nothing like you like you know it felt like it can go either two ways. Like one, you like I don't want to be with this person. I don't know, you know, I don't want to have a baby, mm -hmm. so you know you can walk away from it. Or right. two, you know, you can be like, you know what, like we here now, like, we got to make this work out. And yeah. for me, it was like, figure out all the arguing shit, forget out, forget about everything else. Like, let's, you know, let's sit down, let's have a discussion. <laughs> let's figure out, like, you know, what we need to do to make sure this baby can come into this world and be set. Because I think the ultimate goal for a parent is to make your child's life better than what you had came into already. Right. You know, we all come into situations with our parents and, you know, their goal is obviously to try to make our lives better. Right. And sometimes that's not, that's not the case with some people, but, you know, I feel like for my child, I at least wanted that for them. So know? did you even, I guess, I guess to, I guess another follow-up based off of what you're saying to that point, like, was it, did you see it as an opportunity to be for what we know now as Ocean? Um, How old is she again what? now? Like, she's, it's a month now, bro. She's yeah, one month, yeah, yeah, more yeah, month yeah. now, bro. So was it, did you kind of look at it as an opportunity for you to be for her what necessarily wasn't for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, y'all my boys. Y'all know, y'all know what's been right, going on and everything right, like right. that. So you know, I didn't particularly have that close relationship with my father or my mom. So mm -hmm. you you look at that, you like, all right, you got a child, bro. You like, nah, they gotta get everything I didn't get, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure they get what I didn't get. And, you know, so it's a different level of energy <sighs> that you put towards something. Like it's not like you just going about your day. You know, like okay, everything right. will be straight. You like, nah, right. I gotta make sure everything's straight. Like. You got food, you got diapers, you got wipes, you got clothes, you got whatever you need. And she going to be spoiled. So I feel sorry for whoever got to deal with her in the future, though, because trust me, <laughs> she's spoiled. You know, it's crazy. It's like if you had a son, like it would kind of be kind of be the same until a certain age. I feel like we kind of like harder on a son. Type, harder Man, type. bro, what was Marie saying at the baby shower, bro? What was she saying? If it was a boy, you needed some boxing gloves. If it was a girl, you needed some a gun, a, a yeah, pony, yeah. like a, a, I don't know, a gun, some boxing gloves, a pony, some. I don't know. I don't know. I would have felt bad if you was having a son. Why? I would have felt well, bad if you were having Hold a son. Up. I'm gonna tell you why, bro. Because at the bro, at the baby shower, bro, at the baby shower, this little nigga was getting so much stress. He was, bro, he was getting so much stress, bro. 
personally, bro. Personally, bro. You know, I think you know you should you know take care of your kids, nurture your kids. You know, regardless if it's a, you know a boy or a girl. But but here's the thing: the <clears throat> dynamic changes. Like if you're a father with a daughter, it changes. If you're a a mother with a son, it changes. It's like you got a soft spot because they're the opposite sex. It's just how it is. But like if you got a, a father and a son. Nigga, get your ass on that line, and, <laughs> and you're going to do these drills. I could hey. understand that. And then if you're you a know, mother and a daughter. I could understand that, that you're hot between you to the neck. and your son. It's just, bro, the consensus, the atmosphere was like, oh, okay, you know, it's a girl. You know, you're going to have to get her some flowers. You know, you're going to have yeah. to get her a pony. You know, if it was a boy, you'd have to get her some bicycles. I'm like, damn, man, what would y'all be saying, you know, if it was a boy? So, I mean, he would still be so I think, so I, so I got to kind of, I guess, the answer kind of to that. So what happens What's is, up? you know, we have a boy, you know. Like, yeah, your daughter's still like your legacy, but that boy is like, as a man, like, that is your legacy. Like, every ambition that you sometimes didn't get to live out your life through, you want them to live it at least a little bit. Yeah. Like, if you was a hooper, you at least want your kid to try hooping to see if they can be successful because and I can maybe see that you didn't for get a woman that. Too. Like, if yeah. you come in and have a daughter, you know, I can see that, that way too. Don't get me wrong, you know, I want Ocean to hoop, but you know, I don't want to, you know, play piano, do ballet, and everything else. So it's like, you know, but at the same time, as a mother, I'm going to give her that because. That's like her legacy, what she's seeing. That's that's her little mini me. Yeah. And for a son, you know, for men, you know, that's our mini me. We want that mini me to do everything we thought about doing that we couldn't do. Or we, like, that's you know, like earlier we talked about, like you know, not having that, you know, that parental like kind of mother and father there. You know, when you get a chance to be a father, you like you you okay. know all the things that you struggle with. You like here, I can help you right now. I got you. You, you know, you got same same hardware down here. I got like I, I can show you the way. <laughs> Just relax, all right. <laughs> uh, you say show them the way. You ain't gonna show them how to. Like, yeah, you ain't gonna. I mean, you ain't gonna show them. What you talking about, bro? What? I don't know what you talking about. I don't I'm know. I'm trying to figure out what you was talking, talking about. about. I don't know. I'm talking about life, all right. <laughs> shit is, but I mean, nah, man. You know, I just really wanted to touch on that before we actually get into the pod. You know, like and get into the conversations that you know I'm sure that we'll have because we we like to talk about like a lot of different deep stuff, man. Shit that a little deeper than the surface, man. So just wanted to start off with that one. You know, that that uh, I think people will really enjoy that. Some of the younger audience, some older audience, whatever. You know, I think they'll enjoy and just hear from them about, you know. No, for sure, man. Like so when we come back, man, we're going to get into some, some other topics and shit, man. We'll be back. Want your brand or business featured on The Plug? Advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. Again, advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. We got the eyes that are looking for you. If you or someone you know would like to be a panelist on His and Hers, email us at production at plugnetworkonline.com. Subject line, His and Hers. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. So they wouldn't drop and hit the ground. We back. We back. We back. 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 Yeah. And you saw the names, man. Go ahead and follow my boy on Instagram. Go ahead and follow Salem, Salem Avenue on Instagram. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we follow back. You know, you can comment messages, whatever you need, man. You know, we'll get back to you. You know what I'm saying? We ain't Hollywood like some of these motherfuckers out here, man. You know. But anyway, let's get back to it, man. I, 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 um, before we pulled up, you was just talking to me about the video, man, in Memphis and was Memphis, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, how them, them black cops had beat a black man to death. Now, now what exactly happened? Because I'm, I mean, I'm, 
I know what happened, but like I. But so like I mean, we still waiting for the video. So like <laughs> it's gonna get released tonight, obviously. So we are gonna see it. But from my interpretation, of how I look at the whole situation, you know, when your your neck is swollen, your nose is. His mom described it bent like a S, whatever. Like it looked like that. Like you you beat that far. So it's like, I'm like that's another Rodney King incident. Except with black cops. At first you had the white cops, and now you got the black cops, and it's like. And we got a song called Black Cop. And it was it was before the incident, so right. I mean, it's it's almost as if this is a reoccurring thing, right? Right. It's just that this this is very severe, severe enough. And then I got it. Really, kind of perplexes me because why do certain stories make it and then other stories don't? Like, what makes one story Hollywood type deal, you know, Hollywood quote unquote, and then one story not? You know, what I'm saying certain things get swept under the rug, and then others make it out into the open. You know why this is a highlight? Because they black. But it happens all the time. It happens all the time, but it's like, ooh, we finally get a chance to show them. You all do it too. You know. You see? And I think too, I think really, and like you said too, it, it's their black, but also because it's what, five of them? Yeah. So now it's like, okay, we can, this looks good in the media. You know, I post five black pictures with five faces versus one. Like if you got one, niggas might scroll, kind of scroll past the shit. Yeah. You got five, now everybody like, holy shit, like, this is crazy. Hold on, did you see this? Now you send it to your mom, your grandma, everybody. Everybody seeing it. Uh, now everybody waiting for the video to come out like like it's a damn um, Paramount picture. Now how yeah. does, now, you remember when, I want to say we first recorded Pigs, and we were, um, it was, it was Poor Castle. It was Poor Castle. Yeah. There was a bit of resistance, you know, as far as, you know, whether or not we should, you know, perform <laughs> those records. Um, <clears throat> obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty. Because how do you, I guess, like, how do you feel now, knowing that we've made the music that we've made, and it's 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 been six, seven months, you know, clear since we made Black Cop, and the fact that it's raining true right now, today, five black officers have killed this man and obviously you know i don't know the backstory but i can kind of like relate i can kind of identify um the fear that comes with that you know it's something about that uniform or something about that badge you know it's something about you um being able to legally carry a firearm to traffic stops while i'm not you know i'm just out here you know living my life you know whatever my situation is in any day any moment any particular time um <clears throat> that can be derailed I don't know what this young brother had planned for that day. I don't know what this nigga was going to do tomorrow. I don't know what this nigga was doing the day before. He may have had children, you know. He was somebody's brother, you know, somebody cousin, you know, maybe somebody's uncle, whatever. I guess that shit is, like, really, really terrifying to me. That shit is really, 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 really terrifying to me because, because this motherfucker went to the academy, because this person drives a squad car, you know, because they have the right to kill or whatever this motherfucker can take your life and i don't want to say that nothing will happen but nothing will happen nothing nothing happened they lost their job but i mean i mean they yeah. charged them with murder oh they charging them yeah they supposedly they charging them but at the same time it's like this is my thing right why wait till now to somebody's really black to be quick with action to do the do the charging right so it's like we see white cops <laughs> kill black people all the time we see it Throughout the years, it, it, it never changes. Like, it doesn't change. That's an interesting position to be in, right? So it's where, like, are you, where you identify with the person who was killed, but it's also difficult to not identify with the niggas who did the killing. You know, the cops, they love to throw something up like, oh, we are like a fraternity mm -hmm. of brothers. Like, we will protect each other. I ain't heard one white cop come out and be like, oh, yeah, they are brothers. <clears throat> We're going to protect them. <clears throat> but had they been white, I felt like it would have been different. You know, and it's weird that you, and going back to what you said about, like, making the Black Cop song a while back, and it's ringing true now, it's almost like that Simpsons effect, right? Like, where they make some shit, and then it happens years later. Big Southern Avenue. Or it's shit. like, you put money in stocks, you know, you put money in stocks, and maybe the stock wasn't going crazy, and then Word. the stock go crazy, and it's like, now, <coughs> you know, now now there's some oil on the ball. Now you can get a strike with this now. Right. It's, it's kind of weird, but beforehand, we was trying to bowl with a dry ball you know what i'm saying it's like i don't i really don't understand um 
just kind of go back to what we talked about last week. Like, 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 I really don't understand why people don't listen for for the message. Instead, they listen based on the collective um, opinion of everybody. So, like, if everybody around is saying this isn't cool, you know what I'm saying, then it's not cool. But if, but immediately when some shit happens, now it's cool. You know, it's like. Everybody was like, oh, my God, Creshawn Rock, you know, her and Blueface, blah, blah, blah. You know, he's doing her dirty. And now she's getting drug out of a pot. Have you seen that shit? Yeah. So she got drug out, kicking TVs and shit. I now now she crazy to everybody. <clears throat> but it's like, y'all was looking for that collective message, yo. So, oh, and I'm about to get deep. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Social media Please. is fucking us up. All right. It's, it's fucking us up? It is. Social oh, media is... Boy, boy. okay. Social okay. media is a robot. And robot? you post your pictures, you post your pictures, he posts his pictures, I post my pictures. We all feeding the same robot. All right? So at the end of the day, that robot compiles all of that shit and he sees trends. It, he, he or she, it, whatever, sees trends. Is that funny? <laughs> I knew you was going to smile. I knew it. I knew it. Turkey bacon, man. <laughs> Turkey bacon? Turkey okay. bacon, man. It sees the trends and the shit. <laughs> And then it tells us that this is what's cool, y'all. Hold on to this. And it fucks us up. It herds us. It creates a herd out of us. You know what I'm saying? It, it say it shares back the shit that everybody is posting about because everybody's sharing and liking. And it, it decides for us what, what we think should be cool. So all along saying, hey, man, why the fuck are you wearing a badge and you black? And they looking at us like, nigga, stop. He's black. You know what I'm saying? And then these motherfuckers kill a person and beat that nigga to death. Now they fucking mad. Now our song is cool now. You know what I'm saying? Now if I perform that shit at Port Castle, it probably would have been even better. But, like, that's the thing, man. It's like nobody can decide for themselves. Nobody can. Bro. So it goes to the question. So, and we we talked about this before, like, you know, off the podcast. What is a black cop? What <laughs> makes someone a black me. cop? <laughs> How's that for a double entendre, <laughs> nigga? I have, bro, I, black cop, black president, white rapper, oh, black oh. hockey player. Oh, they all the same thing? They all say? the same thing, bro. They all the same thing, bro. Turkey bacon, condom sex, all the same thing, bro. Condom mm, sex. Okay. It's all the same thing, bro. Okay, condom ah, sex. All right. It's all the same thing, bro. Oh. I'm trying to tell you. Ooh. Trying to tell you. Condom sex? <laughs> really? Condom sex. Good. <laughs> the fuck is you Wear condoms, people. No, listen to this man. Right? That nigga had PTSD. He said condom sex. I said keep jumping a little bit. Like, yeah. oh, shit. It's too late for me. It's already hey, done. It. But there is, I don't, I don't, man, it's, that don't get me wrong, bro. I understand that there are, you know, some upstanding brothers who really, you know, go to the academy with the intention of, you know, you know one man can change the world. But that shit changes very, very fucking quickly, bro. <laughs> changes very, very fucking quickly, bro. Immediately when you put them aviators on, you I'm telling cop. you, bro. I'm telling you, bro. You put on that long-ass fucking state that trooper ass hat, bro. <laughs> that, that shit, beer? bro. That, that City boy! City, City boy! boy. <laughs> that, that shit. Bro, I can't, The moment bro. you hop in the car and turn on bad boys, bro, I'm, you, bro, I'm, you, fuck, you, you off the team. I'm trying to tell you, bro. <laughs> I can't text, but you on your laptop? <laughs> Yo, you... Oh. What was it? What was it? What was you on your laptop? Um, cat, uh, what, what did I say in the song? I mean, mm, I'm, I'm a black badge in a Ford type in his laptop. Bad, bad. You niggas crazy. Quit the caps, caps lock. lock. Ah, come on, bro. Uh, come on, bro. Uh, look up the song, you motherfuckers. The shit is, it's, it's, man. It, it just, I'm. This shit really bothers me, bro. Because this is, bro. When we initially made the song, and people was asking us, well, why are you talking about black cops, black cops, black cops? And I said, yo, when you get pulled over. And a black cop gets out of that squad car is no different than a white person. There is no other situation that exists in this world where you would find yourself in a situation where, you know, you're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Let's say, you know, we driving to fucking Dallas like we was, nigga. And we fucking pull over to get gas in Arkansas where they don't believe in streetlights. They don't believe in streetlights on street, on the highway. It is the darkest place I've ever fucking been, bro. You in the middle of fucking nowhere. You getting gas, bro. You can tell, bro. Probably ain't gonna be too many niggas out here. It just is what it is. And you see a brother or you see a sister. Y'all don't even have to speak. There's this camaraderie that you all have. I got your back. You got my back. Regardless of what the fuck goes on. If I see you with one of them badges on, that, bro, that social contract is null and void. I can't help you, bro. I can't help you. Whatever the fuck you got going on, whatever is, is, is happening, whatever situation you find yourself in, 
You found yourself in it. I got to get the fuck on. I'm no, 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 no. I don't know. It's no, go ahead, go ahead. It's hard for me. Like, you know, so how I view black cops, I look at that as like, think about slavery days, right? You have black slave catchers. And these slave catchers would go out their way because it was following what the law that they, slaves shouldn't be free. Because they didn't want they didn't want to get in trouble, man. So yeah. they, you know, they they black slave catchers. Bro. But but essentially, ain't that what black police are doing? They don't want to get in trouble. You know, they want you to follow the law of what the law said you should be doing, abiding by. So when I see somebody that's like you know a black cop, I think of like the black slave catcher. You know, they enlist you. You 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 do a good job. You catch a slave. You get your bounty reward, whatever. And you know, you eat good at the table with the white man. That shit is wild. Bro. And so whenever I see that, I feel like over time, from slave catcher, it went to and not police. Only police. And, and not only just like, police. Them niggas is everywhere. They on ESPN. They on the news. I'm trying to tell you, bro. They on podcasts. Ooh, ESPN. Drop a name. <laughs> Can we get a name? I'm just saying, bro. I didn't see some times where I felt like a black ESPN reporter or a news guy or you know anybody in the media or even on a sports team should have done something differently than they did. Word. Um, and then you know your silence or your lack thereof support um, rang true to a lot of uh, kind of like you know playing for the other team type of vibes, you know. It gave me that uh, I'm telling Massa type type vibe. Are oh, you running? I'm telling. Oh, Massa, we sick. You got a book. We sick. Nigga. <laughs> we sick. That's here, what nigga. You got a book. I'm snitching. <laughs> and we be back, man. Want your brand or business featured on the plug? Advertise with us at plugnetworkonline.com. Again, advertise with us at plugnetworkonline.com. We got the eyes that are looking for you. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. God, this is oh wow! Oh my God, we're back. Okay, and we're black. Um, man, that fucked me up right now. No, you got something. You got a question, right? Yeah, yeah. Answer your question, man. Oh my God. Um, okay. Uh, shit. I'm sorry, y'all. Was a little flustered. Um, who is higher on the list? All time. Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. No, I'm a deferred. I'm gonna say who's higher. Damian Lillard or Stephen Curry? Damian Lillard. Y'all okay. both are biased on both of those questions. I'm gonna let yeah. you know up front, I'm biased as fuck. You asked me he about Damian Lillard. Anyway. Yeah, like he so. said. He said for now. Wait. So you saying Kev? You saying Kevin Durant is is higher? Is not high, is Steph is higher than Kevin Durant for now? For now, yes. What do you mean for now? They just got a ring last year. Like, is it oh, like, okay? Do you see this changing? How old is Kevin Durant? What, how many times? How long he been on the Nets? If Brad is thirty eight, he got to be by thirty five. About thirty four. I mean, Kyrie thirty two. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's still three more years going on. Three <laughs> rings, that's five. Man, these niggas getting old, man. But anywho, no, I'm no, 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 no. But no. but hold on, let's go back to Dame. You what said you Dame say? was hot. Absolutely, Dame is the greatest basketball player to ever touch a basketball court. Okay, so okay. let's be realistic in here, okay? Because <laughs> like, oh, like, there's okay. a time limit. Jesus. All right, okay. There's a time limit, and y'all okay. not being realistic. Who's the highest, who's better, Steph Curry or Kevin Durant? Let's all be honest. Stephen Curry is a better Michael better. Jordan. We'll just kill it with that. Okay, we killing it? 
Because yeah, that's Michael what Jordan. you're doing. You just killed it again. Michael Jordan. Personally, I think Steph Curry is better than Kevin Durant. Now, I mean, you know, if we at the park, if we on the black top, you know, if we just picking niggas up to hoop, um, it wouldn't surprise. Like, you know, if we had all the niggas who ever played in the NBA and, you know, it was a big pickup game, I wouldn't be surprised if Kevin Durant was taking first, second, or third. I wouldn't. Motherfucker seven feet tall, seven, six wingspan. Bink, 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 pull up on you. Fantastic. But as far as what is brought to a franchise, as far as culture, leadership, the ability to lead a team and not be led, Steph Curry. Hands down, hands up, bro. Mm. And it's not even close. Kevin Durant blew the original 3-1 lead. See, look, we forget that. Oh, so. so. We forget that. Kevin Durant and Matt Ryan are really the same person. You talking about the Thunder? Mm-hmm. So KD blew that the thunder. Sha, 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 sha. Yeah. So you ain't gonna, <laughs> so so you ain't going to mention the fact that Harden had his lowest numbers that season in the playoffs, and so did Westbrook. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Well, oh, hold oh, on, ooh, on. Ooh, let's talk about that. James Harden wasn't on the Thunder when they blew that three one lead. He was in Houston playing for the Rockets. So I want you to get back mm, on that train, ooh, and I want ooh. you to try again, my guy. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. What, but what is this? Here's what is here's, this? But okay. Key, here's what I don't do ooh, ooh. is I don't I don't attack his knowledge of basketball <laughs> or football. <laughs> this, this is, you know, I can I can play it on the court, but you know, when it comes down to the the, the 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 specifics, you know, I don't I don't you know I don't try to do what I can't do. That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm, we're going to get back on the specifics. All right. Cool. I'm um, who, who was dude on there? Tabo Savalosha? That was the name? He couldn't shoot a free throw, bro. Second team all defense. Don't, bro, you know how many times they fouled this man? He, he was missed still, every he was free still throw? Pretty useless. All right. That's not... <laughs> useless? <laughs> yeah, yes, he was, bro. Whoa, bro. And he was starting. He was He was very, very useful when they was up 3 1. Now he's fucking useless when they lose three games in he a row. Very, we very have useful, to be honest about this. Very, very Don't oversell it. We have to Don't be honest about it. this. Don't oversell it, please. I would much, much rather. Very, very useful? Come on, sir. Defensively, absolutely. He was the best defensive player on the team. Fine. Absolutely. Fine. Russell Westbrook ain't guarding nobody. Kevin Durant wasn't guarding nobody. Oh, uh, Russell, Russell Westbrook played great defense. Great defense? Yeah, yeah he just, it was just uh, offense. He, he was hustled. Man. He hustled. Bro, just because you hustle, bro, it's, bro. Bro. He played better defense than Steph Curry. Ooh. I don't know, man. What? Stop it. Okay. I don't know, man. See, okay. now you're not being realistic again. This is what I'm talking know. about. Okay. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> like, that is, that is, that is like, bro, that's a bold statement. Like, what you mean when you say better defense, bro? Okay, so let's change this up. Who's, who's, who's going to the finals this year? Who's going to the finals this year? And I'm gonna be honest Boston. with you, man. I'm gonna be honest with you, Boston. Um, in the East, I don't know, man. I I don't think Boston would have made it or, last year if Milwaukee was healthy. Or the Cavs. I think the Cavs might be going. Mm. I feel like they are. I feel like they're gonna see each other in these in these playoffs, and it's gonna be a a battle. So we just gonna overlook the Milwaukee Bucks. Asalamu alaikum, Yonder Santa de Kumpo. We just gonna. Nah, because only reason I I say this is because <laughs> Giannis team has been. We just gonna ignore that. Only reason I'm saying that is because Giannis team been a little. They've been a little distant from my boy now. They, it's been crazy. I don't understand. Now that makes Giannis play harder. Giannis still been putting up the same numbers. He's still playing hard, but it's like his team kind of been a little. You know, I don't, I don't I don't know where they at lately. I mean, I, I, this is this is this is a bit much for me right now. This anyway, bro, I, I asked a question. I feel like. I feel like you scared to answer it. What was the question? Who who's going to the finals? What two teams? I mean, okay, all right. So I'm gonna be honest with you, okay? I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I actually feel like Denver might make a run late. Why do you think that is? Because Jokic is a beast. He's the about to be the MVP for three times in a row. Is that why you're saying that? You see, you see, like I, I'm just asking just you ask questions. questions. Like, come on, I'm trying to give no because he knows how I feel about the Denver Nuggets. So it's hard for me to say this right now. <laughs> so this is a moment for him to put the knife in and turn it because he knows it's difficult for me to even talk about these because they got right the now. best player in the league. You see what I'm saying, bro? You see what I'm saying? Like, bro, he's shooting sixty percent right and leading pretty much the, the the best team in in in, the, in that damn conference but on sixty percent shooting as a center. But he also has to go up steps one foot at a time. That's how unathletic this nigga is, bro. I have, I, have a, I have a problem with that, bro. So this being is, athletic is what leads you to be an MVP? I'm not amazing. saying that's what leads you to be an MVP. I'm not saying that's what leads you to be an MVP. He's not unathletic, bro. Let's not say that. We're going to see him <laughs> at the park, and he's going to be doing all types of shit that a nigga that size shouldn't be doing. Nikola Jokic? Yes. Is athletic? 
I didn't. That's not what I Did just said. You see said. how I went overseas to ask this question? This is bullshit. <laughs> he there. But we're not gonna say he's unathletic, bro. He's 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 just not. He's not fucking Giannis. All right, that's fine. He's I mean, not MB. That's fine. But I mean, he's not unathletic. I mean, I mean. Okay, look, bro. All right, bro. look, bro. I feel like Denver is gonna make a run in the West late, and I like. I feel like they have a really, really good chance to get into the finals because the Against Warriors him. are Asperger's. The Phoenix Suns then fell the fuck off. DeAndre Ayton, man. <laughs> against who? Who they playing Ray, against? Ray should have took his ass to the Pacers. Um, so, I'm going to be honest with you, man. It's either going to be the Milwaukee Bucks. Or the Celtics. Or the Cavs. What? Either them either, either them two or or sleeper team, Miami Heat. You can't never count them boys So, out. the Celtics is not even close. That's my team, and I, I love my team, but <clears throat> you, it's hard watching them this year, man. You can never count the Miami Heat out. It's hard watching my team this year, man. I, I, no, I, the Celtics aren't close. No, no, no. Ooh. I, usually Ooh, I would yeah. have agreed with you, but I can't see it this year with Miami, man. I, and that's tough for me to say on, in front of y'all on, on so, this camera. So JT and JB, the season they having this year, you're saying that you can't even see them close to making their final playoff appearance. So we're going to call them Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, all right? I'm going to call them JT and JB. Um, we're going uh, <laughs> to slow down on that there. Um, not, I mean, you know, they, I mean, look, bro, I've seen this before. I have seen this before, bro. I know how this plays out. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown is just Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum four inches taller. I'm trying to Stop tell it. you. I've oh seen this before. God, I've bro. seen this, this before. Watch what I tell you. Watch what I fucking man, you tell you, bro. That's Watch a bold what I tell statement, you. They're man. going to score a whole bunch of points. They're going to score a whole bunch of points. It's going to look great. It's going to be amazing. And then they're going to go the fuck home. So what'd you say, JB and JT? Like. Justin Bieber and Justin nah. Timberlake. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Hey, that's a fire combo still. Listen. <laughs> come on, hey, baby, baby. I'm trying to tell you. You know what? I want you to come back on the pod after the Celtics do exactly what the fuck I just told you they would do. Lay a motherfucking egg. Watch. You're going to see. You're going to see. It's and okay. his very next statement was like, bro, you know, you see, you know, they had injuries. So, you know, agree, that's the only reason why they, they made it there. I can't I, agree. Bro, I understand. I can't agree, Kent. Bro, I understand. Y'all, bro, y'all. I can't agree. agree. But I will say things. that. They be right. I do, I right. do, um, I do see Giannis doing his thing. I do see uh, she, uh Cav Cavaliers look really good. First of all, shout out my boy, man, um, Golly. Donnie Mitch, man. You know he, Golly. he has been Golly. amazing. But not only him though. You know what I'm saying? Like his team has also, in his injury and his absence, been able to pick up. You know, um, kind of where they left off last year, where they still had a all right season. You know, they just they have a bigger piece now. It's like. You know they 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 back court is great. They front court is great. It's it's a very uh, you want to talk about sleeper team like bro. When this, this year started, nobody was talking about the Cavs at all. We was like nigga, they look good on paper, but we'll see. That was always the story. They look great now. They see, look great. See, look, these are the issues that I have, right? Because we've been talking about the Cavs, and we still ain't talked about Darius Garland. See what I'm saying? That's why what that nigga said last week was so <laughs> asinine. <laughs> yeah, so like because we done mentioned Kyrie Irving just I mean, you know off, like, you know, just well, off the hip. Absolutely, he's dropped a few fifty point bro. games. You but know, you he's see? triple doubling. He's I, I just he's I, doing his thing, man. I he's don't young. Know, you know if you know, there was a gentleman that we met last week um, on Lily's birthday. Okay, and, you know, he said Darius Garland was the best point guard in Cleveland Cavalier history. He said this huh? with his mouth. He said this. Yeah, and I'm like, do, um, do you forget that Kyrie? You ain't slap him? him? Well, I mean, well, so I wasn't present, so no, Cuz didn't slap him. But I, 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 I'm, I, I didn't look. I was just like, did you forget about Kyrie, or like, is that not a thing? Like, and then there was other coin guards too. But like, I'm just like, did you forget? Like, Kyrie is the leading. Like, Kyrie was right next to to LeBron dropping 46, 50 points in the playoffs. Like, you, I mean, you, you feel he, me? He hit the shot. He is the biggest shot in that saved the franchise in the ring. Like saved. Saved? Yeah, saved. Jesus. Kyrie don't hit that shot, they don't win. No, I forgot he's a biased Kyrie oh fan, too, so God. I'm going to leave it where it's at bro, on that. Because he plays with Kevin Durant, bro. Was, you, bro. Oh, my God. No, no, it's because he played with the Boston Celtics, and that's when he picked it up. <coughs> and he was doing trash at the Celtics. I, I mean, lie to I'm, you. He wasn't trash? trash? Yes, he was. Trash bags. Yes, he was. Oh, my Poop God. Put, put Steph in that, in that position. Steph was going to the playoffs. I'm telling you, bro. Okay. You agree? That's why you let it go. Because you ain't a let it go type nigga. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> oh, that's that's what we're going at. <laughs> I, that's, I mean, it's I mean, you know, it's nothing against Kyrie, but you know, he just, you know, he, I mean, 
Kyrie Irving go down as one of the best all time point guards ever. He's going to be a top five point guard before it's all said and done. Facts. I agree. 100%. Top five? Yes, top wait, five. Wait, point guards? Yes. Top point guard. five? Who's. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Magic? Pete? Oh, he's definitely going above Pete. Yes. What? Yes. What? Yes. He got one ring. Bro. That, okay. So rings will make what makes it? It makes a lot. Okay, then LeBron's. We'll be third, back, man. How do we be back? We'll be back. That basketball talk is enough for now, man. Want your brand or business featured on the plug? Advertise with us at plugnetworkonline.com. Again, advertise with us at plugnetworkonline.com. We got the eyes that are looking for you. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. Yeah, like, <laughs> we back. This is my favorite part, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know last week, like I said, we've been talking about bringing people when we get into the center, they <laughs> core get into the center of who they are, man. So I want to ask you one question, man. Um, you're a very driven guy, man. You know, you got a lot of things that you want to do, um, a lot of things that you have done, um, and a lot of things that you've done since I've known you, right? Um, <clears throat> and for that reason, I think me and you kind of resonate with each other just because we kind of got that same mind state that we're going to go get it. And, you know, we got a lot of goals for ourselves, and it's not like it's too late, right? Um, but that shit don't just come from nowhere. You know, it don't come from uh, watching a movie. It don't come from listening to one podcast, and then you just realize in your life that you want to be something. Uh, these things happen over time. And I think for me, there was a moment that that, that that came about, and I just wanted to ask you what yours was, man. Like, for you, what happened in your life? What happened to you in your younger years that kind of brought you to the point where you was like, I'm going to go ahead and get what I need to go get? And I'm gonna make a life for myself. Ooh, we okay. That's a deep question. That's a good one. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, I think it was definitely in the moment where this. I guess it goes back into the life story a little bit, but it was in that moment where you know, when I was a kid, you know, I was like 10 years old. You know, I was going throughout the streets in Houston, Texas. You know, I was going from different people' houses. You know, sometimes spent homeless, sometimes doing just doing different things, and it was like. I went to stay at this one lady house. Her name was Miss Regina Gilbert. I never forget her name. You know, she had me come live with her, and she was like, you know, you need to start going to school. You need to start doing well for yourself because you're smart. You you got it. And it wasn't until you know I went to school and I went to the wrong like classroom because I thought like that was my old classroom. Like I went to that classroom. And I was like, this is the right class to go to because nobody walked me through on my first day where to go. And the teacher sat right there. And she just started crying, and I was just like, like what's up? Like what's going on? Like, she was like, come here, follow me. They took me to the front office, and then, you know, CPS, you know, Child Protective Services showed up. And it was like, nah, we'll take you to this house, you come with us. And it was in that moment when I, they, they took me to the foster home. And they first they lied to me. They said he was coming back the next day. Like, I thought I was going back to Miss Regina house the next day. It was like, yeah, you coming back? Because if they would have told me, a nigga would have ran. I would have been gone. So, went over there, and I sat there. And once I talked to the um, my foster mom, she was like, yeah, you ain't going back, baby. You, you you here. So I had one pair of the oversized shorts, nigga, and like the long, you know, t-shirts, you know. Nigga, the capri shorts? Yeah, like pretty much it was like capri <laughs> shorts, but I don't know, man. It was just it was just it was just Early there. Two thousands was a different time. Yeah, it was a different you. time, you feel me? So good. it was there and it was like me just sitting in the room and I had a chance to like, you know, reflect on everything that I was going through, like being homeless, you know, going through things, going through trash cans, bro. Like you don't expect a ten year old kid to have to go through that, but when, that moment when you're going through all that, and then you coming around, you seeing other people who deal with different shit around you, like inside this foster care system, and it's like, 
the system is really fucked up. A lot of people don't know that. Like, it's like, depending on where you're from, me being from Cincinnati, Ohio, me being down there, down in Texas, it's like, I don't get the same financial support as everybody else do that's from the state. So I'm getting the bare minimum. So it's like, all my caseworkers that was kind of mentoring me, trying to help me through the process, they all was quitting because it wasn't enough money to go in that towards to help me out in the situation. So I had like casework after casework after caseworker. And like, it was to the point where I was just looking at, I'm like, man, why am I going through this? Like, what's going on? And you know, just thinking about my whole life. And I was like, but I ain't no way, I don't care what's going on. I ain't gonna never be in a situation like this again. Like, I just know, like, I'm getting out of this. I don't know what, when it's gonna be, but I know I'm getting out of it. And when my grandmother got me back and she brought me back home to Cincinnati from the foster care system, she was like, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you one thing, you know, in this life, you're gonna have to work hard. Nothing's ever gonna be given to you. And you have to understand that, you know, you're like, you wasn't given, I guess, a full plate to deal with already. You know, a lot of people have a plate, you know, you have people handing y'all, they give you some utensils and everything like that. Like, I only have a, pay, I have a paper plate I picked up off the street. And I'm trying to, you know, get like a, you know, like the glass plate, the nice, like, you know, ceramic plate that you put on the table. You got your utensils, your teacup, everything lined up. All you, like, Word. I ain't had that. So it's like, when you don't have that, and that's what a lot of people go through, I was like, Am I gonna go get some dishes and you know make my own like you know what they call cutlery set? Word. Or I'm gonna just go sit here and wait for somebody to bring it to me. And I think it was in that moment, you know, just those moments. Think about all those moments throughout my childhood. It was like, nah, I gotta go get it. Like, ain't no way. So I told myself, whatever I'm doing, no matter from that moment, whether it's sports, whether it's you know looking at something, whether it's learning learning a new instrument, whatever it is, I'm like, you gotta go 100% or not. You know, we all have conversations. We talk like, you know, with me, it's either 100 percent or it's not. There's never going to be a moment where it's like, all right, man, I feel like giving 50 today. Like, you ain't going to get that. <clears throat> and so I feel like, you know, when you had a mentality, no matter what you're doing, you're going to be ambitious. Like, I can't sit right there and work a nine to five and be happy. Just be like, yeah, I can't wait to retire from this job. I'm like, no, because I'm ambitious. Like, I have to go get it. I have to experience life for myself because I experience what it looked like when you don't have it. I've seen some of the lowest where people can go. Like, you know, like, and, and that was that shit. And really, real traumatic moment. I didn't really want to bring it up, but fuck it, I'll bring it up. This happened when I was eight, nigga. When I was eight, I came in. I was living with my pops at the time. He was, he was dating this lady, whatever. You know, he, you know, he did what he did, whatever. But at the same time, I hear a lot of arguing commotion going on in the room. I'm like, damn, what the hell's going on? Like, you know, I come to the room. Like, you know, you been nosy as a kid. You trying to see what's going on. I get around the corner. And he look at me in my face and he say, he said, my nigga, I love you, but I'm about to kill myself in this bitch. And then you you thinking, you're like, I'm eight. I'm like, huh? And he tries to proceed to throw them both out the window. And for me, seeing that, that was like one of the hardest things as a kid. You like, it hits you differently. Like, it's like, damn, like, this somebody's supposed to be my father that I'm supposed to look up to and see, but it ain't never been that. And the moments before that, I was already, he was in and out of jail. So it was like, I still didn't barely stay with you. And the time, time I came to stay with you, that's what you own. So it was like, in those moments, is <clears throat> And you know, it's crazy, like, I don't know, from the day, from the day that, I'll never forget the day I met this nigga, like, uh, I think I met maybe Ty first. I met somebody first. And uh, they was like, hey man, you know, niggas gonna be playing the game later. You know, this we in college at the time. Niggas gonna be playing the game later. You know, you should pull up, bro. Like. Slide, you know, I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I, I whoop some niggas ass. You know, I play this shit. I do this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm on the sticks with it, whatever. I pull up and, you know, niggas is getting their ass whooped. And, you know, he pick up the sticks or whatever. He next, you know, check my nigga Chaz that went around the room type shit on niggas. He pick up the sticks. He like, I'm about to whoop your ass. Like, you really, you really ass. You know what I'm saying? He's on that type <laughs> talk energy. Shit, yeah. And, you know, they playing. And shit just ain't going key way, you know. Key throw the controller, it break everybody. Oh my god, we all in the room like this nigga crazy. This nigga, this nigga <laughs> left out the room, you know what I'm saying? And we all like nigga we broke the controller. Like we don't got a fuck controller to play with now, you know what I'm saying? But like from the time of that was, it had to be about shit, nigga. Damn, like at least nine, nine years, years ago, ago, you know what I'm saying? Like it's been a minute, you know. Like niggas always just been real. Um, intentional about treating people with respect and like and, and keeping shit real you know what i'm saying right. even in the times where we have arguments or whatever you know 
I actually have a question for the both of you all. Um, <clears throat> you know, you all stories would be different, but um, I would like to know how you all found yourselves at Moorhead State. A recruiter came to my school. Well, first of all, I wasn't trying to go to college. I ain't going to lie to you. <clears throat> a recruiter came to my school, and he was black. Word. He came to a school that was majority black. Obviously, that was a purposeful mission, you know what I'm saying, for him. Like, you know, he he was going to go and raise up the, the 4% or 2% that Moorhead State already was. And he and he he was, uh, like I talked about with leadership, he led with leadership, you know, and, to, and as a leader, he didn't tell me he was a leader. He came with a suit on, you know, and he came with a tie. He came with his vernacular. He came with his his self still on intact, but it was, um, you know, it was in a professional, it was in a professional manner. Um, and for me, that was huge. Cause you know, all I knew was, was hoping and, you know, um, I, I didn't know what else I wanted to do. So for me, that kind of showed the way for me that I could really do something else. And I went and looked at the school and next thing you know, I was at a dorm. Um, that, it wasn't really no crazy ass shit that happened. And besides, you know, I saw a powerful black man in my eyes, and I and I wanted to be that. You know, so my situation is just you know it's a little bit different because you know I didn't know what I was doing. Like <coughs> honestly, a nigga almost went to the Marines. Like I went to Meps. I went through the whole process. Nigga, didn't make you get down on your knees, fall on your knees. You gotta hit a sound, all that shit. That shit's crazy. Duck yep. walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <some> duck walk <laughs> shit. So I was doing that, and then the recruiter, you know, he was constantly coming to the school and. The day before, because they was like they scheduled some college tours, and Moorhead State was on one of those lists of colleges to go to, and all the teachers kind of lined up. They was like, "Nah, you go on this college tour first. You not going to the military." It's like I forgot the lady name, but it's a black lady. She was working in the front office. Like she was cool as shit, but she was the main one. Like, nah, he ain't, you getting paid to recruit him? You getting whatever? And he's like, I ain't getting nothing to incentivize to recruit him. At the time, I know now niggas do get a little bit, you know, bread from that shit, but she was like, nah, he ain't going. I went to Moorhead State and it was like, you know, this is what's going on. I met a couple of black people on campus. It was cool as shit, but I was like, eh, I don't know if this is me and I can't afford this shit. And it wasn't until my mentor, lucky enough, white dude, coolest dude, like he's pretty much like a father figure. He was, he played some of that that what I didn't get. And he was like, you know, you come stay with us and we will help you get in-state tuition. Man, and that man. shit, I'm like, when somebody do that for you, it's like shit. Damn, you gonna help me afford it? Shit, get in state tuition? Like, yeah. shit, I can't. Yeah. And that's why I moved to Kentucky. And, you know, ever since then, I was going to Moorhead State and just thinking about everything. I was like, damn, those teachers coming there and him allowing me to stay in state so I can afford Moorhead. Because right. I couldn't go to UC because UC cost too much, even if I was in state. Facts. So I was like, Facts. but you know, this, it was a school that had a lot going on, man. But you, we learned a lot as black men in there. So I actually enjoyed it, man. Honestly, <clears throat> um, I think it was, I think it was good to see the other side of things. And uh, kind of learned a lot from that. Um, I've always been curious about that. Yeah, that's it. it was interesting. It wasn't. It definitely wasn't Georgia State. You know, it wasn't nowhere to lay your head as a black person. But yeah, was, all in all, man, I enjoyed it. Um, but next week we got um we got somebody else on next week already in the books. I ain't gonna tell y'all who it is. I really don't want to do that ever. Like I'm not finna spoil shit for y'all. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I'm just playing. Watch the show. But um, you know, we got another guest on next week. But I appreciate you for coming out, my boy. I'm show, my boy. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's all love this way. And, you know, we I hope we continue to grow as men. I hope we continue to grow it financially and, and, and business sense and things like that, you know. Word. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we'll see y'all next time. I'm Ken Mellos. King Ami. And this is Tell the Two Cities Podcast. Peace. Bow, bow. Want your brand or business featured on The Plug? Advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. Again, advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. We got the eyes that are looking for you.
years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. 